that's where the bus meeting point is. And that's the city down there. And I have about 45 minutes. What do you think? Am I gonna make it down there, find a cash machine and get back up in time for the bus? Mm -hmm. I don't know. The final day on the Ruse Prestige began with an early morning bus ride up the hill to another unexpected highlight. When planning this trip, many of you wrote to me to let me know not to miss the Milk Abbey, and to be honest, on that morning, I woke up with such a bad headache that I almost canceled. But when we made it up the hill and got out of the bus, this view made me glad I didn't. I was not prepared for the sheer size of the Milk Abbey. I mean, when you look at the size of milk on a map, you would never think that something this huge would be here. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. After a short photo op, we descended the stairs and walked through several gates to meet our tour guide in one of the inside squares. And to give you a better idea of the actual size of this structure, this is only one of the squares. Our tour guide, an older Asian woman speaking German with a French accent, greeted us and let us know what channel to tune our audio devices to. Uh, these devices were supplied by the cruise line in all the cabins and operate like a shortwave radio, so it's easier to hear the tour guide even if you aren't standing close by. After a short story about some of the decorations in this main square, she led us around the corner and to one of the entrances into the complex. And that's where the bad news hit. She stopped and kindly mentioned that the use of recording devices of any kind is not allowed inside the Abbey. <coughs> that was unexpected. So I can't really show you the beautiful cathedral, the Harry Potter-like library, the ornate cross that supposedly holds a fragment of the true cross, the rooms where the religious celebrities and various dignitaries have slept and so on. But if you get the chance, you should definitely go check it out yourself. There's also a whole forest of garden up here. I'm sure this is a very peaceful place for the monks and the students to walk around when there aren't, you know, like thousands of tourists here. But when is that? All sorts of paths going in different directions. Of course, I'm wishing that, you know, at the top of this there was a roller coaster, but you can't always get what you want. And I have to keep an eye on the time. It's 10.43 and I think the meeting time for the bus is at 11.30. And I wanted to try to find a cash machine because I want to leave a tip for people on the ship. I don't have enough cash, so maybe I should get out of the mysterious forest here. Ooh, I made it to the top and there's no roller coaster, but there is a swimming pool. This does look like it's meant to be a pool, doesn't it? But uh, kind of swampy. That's where the bus meeting point is. And that's the city down there. And I have about 45 minutes. What do you think? Am I going to make it down there, find a cash machine, and get back up in time for the bus? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, I've got the cash. And now I have about 20 minutes to walk through this construction area and all the way back up that hill. And I am sure I'm going to be the last person on that bus, and then all the... All the people sitting there are gonna give me dirty looks because if there is two things that Germans can do very well, it's be on time and give a dirty look. Oh well, they said we have until 11.30 and it's 11.11 right now. Hello. Look, here in Melk, they even have free hugs. No time for that. Up the hill we go. All the way up here to, oh my gosh. I've done so much walking on this cruise and it's not like, flat and my calves are gonna be popping look at those muscles all right i just have to make it up these pretty stairs and that's where the bus and i'm sure everybody else is gonna be waiting i made it and i'm not the last person that guy in the yellow shirt back there well there he is 
That's the cruise director, so he's not even in the bus yet. All right. Back at the river, and there is another ship either coming or going there. And here's one from Thurgau Travel, the Thurgau Silence. There's, wow, okay, there's a lot of ships here today. We're also in the first row of a double row situation, so there's passengers going over our ship to get onto land. And look, there you can see that's the, the little house that the captain sits in, and you can see how they can make it higher and lower for the bridges. By the way, I've already done an entire ship tour, and I mean, there's not a lot to it, but uh, you can look for that video in my library if you want to see what the inside of the ship looks like as well. By the way, this will give you a good idea of just how much there is to do on a river cruise, at least on this river cruise. So 7.15 is the musical morning greeting. Then 7.30 to 9.30 is breakfast. The uh, excursion that I did was from 9 to 11.45. 11.45 was everybody on board. 12 was sail away. 12.30 is when lunch started. At 3 o'clock, oh, there's a special cocktail party for a certain group of people here on board the David set that's from some travel agency then uh, oh 345 is tea and coffee time then 430 we arrive in uh, grind and we're there until six so 615 is everybody on board and 630 is sail away and then tonight, there is uh, an information session at 6.30 about what it's going to be like tomorrow when we leave the ship. Dinner is at 7, and then to, from 8 to 11, it says pay your drink bills at the bar. And I don't think that I have any bill at all. Um, I did have two bottles of water, but I think I paid for those already. Um, yeah, and then starting at 9, they have the dance and... And fun music, 10 o'clock is the, is the midnight snack at 10. And that's what, that's what's going on today. Like I've said before, there's no casino, there's no gym, there's no pool, there's, you know, there's not, there's only one bar. It's more about the sightseeing and enjoying the company, the people you're with. And yeah, if you, uh, if you are planning a river cruise, two things I want to remind you to bring with and I'll, I'm sure I'll mention these in some other video as well, but one of them is binoculars and the other one is some kind of game, you know, like I've seen people playing Uno and Skip Bow and things like that. I think, yeah, I mean, if I was traveling with other people that I knew, I think we would have been playing a lot of games. And now I'm gonna play the game Sleep. See you in a minute. And just like magic, a couple of hours have gone by. We are now in the city of Grind. I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. Wait a second, was that an R. Kelly song? Should we not be singing that anymore? And I took a few hours off and just walked around on my own. I went into that church and I got some tasty gelato right here. A good friend of mine, Claudia, grew up just uh, 15 kilometers away from here, and she said her grandma always used to take her to that gelato place, so I definitely had to come and get some. She recommended it, and it was a very good recommendation. And now I'm sitting here doing some last-minute stuff, uh, filling out the questionnaire, and I will bring that, put it in the box, and then also this is how they do tips on this ship, on this cruise line. It says here, 
uh, in the name of the entire crew of the MS Rousse Prestige. Uh, we hope you had a good time and, you know, it's international, like, tradition and courtesy to leave a tip for the crew. We suggest between seven to nine euros per person per day. It's spread out among the entire crew and there is a box to put it in up by the reception. And here is the envelope. And I think somebody actually wrote thank you on there by hand. So I've had a great time. And of course, because I didn't have to pay anything to be on this cruise, I am definitely going to leave a very large tip. And when I'm done with the questionnaire, I'm probably gonna make my clothes lasagna, pack up my bags. There is, uh, in 20 minutes, there's a, it says an information hour or information session about disembarking tomorrow, but I think I'm gonna skip it and just ask the people at my table what they talked about. I don't really feel like going there right now. And dinner is at seven o'clock, which is a little more than half an hour. So it's almost dinner time anyways. Don't you say it. I can't hear it I get defensive When I think you're calling me out But I don't scream, I don't shout I seethe in my anger I swallow my answers I try to Cocktail cam, and it's also the last night of the cruise. This has been a really great experience, and I'm once again so thankful that Plan Tours asked me to be a part of it. This will definitely not be my last river cruise. I really enjoyed it, and in a totally different way than ocean cruising. Again, tonight, I just had so much fun sitting on the top deck, and not only watching the little towns come by and disappear, but going through the locks. And also there was a big uh, thunderstorm behind us and I, ma I managed to get a couple cool pictures of the lightning, which was yeah, surprising. I just tried it with my iPhone and got pictures like this. I was thinking while going through the locks and watching these cities go by and stuff that it's almost like a dark ride you know at disney where you sit in a boat and ride through pirates of the caribbean or whatever because yeah you just don't know what's coming and then you know an event happens like you go through a lock or another ship passes and or you go under a bridge like we're going under right now hold on i'll try to show you you can kind of see the lights up there right there it goes it's way more exciting from the top deck. And in the locks, you get so close to the wall. I, yeah, I, I just can't believe that the ships get that close. We are literally centimeters away from that wall. And also when you float in there and the water's all out, it smells like underwater, if that makes sense, just because the water was just there and it's now empty. I made my clothes lasagna tonight and took a shower and now I'm laying in bed. Tomorrow all off board is nine. Yeah, nine in the morning. So that's not too early. I mean, I have been on ships longer than that, but I think I'll be fine with nine in the morning. And I'm sharing a taxi with some of my table mates back to the main station. Then I'm gonna put my suitcase in a locker again because I have about two, nine, 10, 11, two and a half hours 
of time before my train leaves. Hopefully it will be on time and I'll have no delays. I have to transfer once in the city of Nuremberg, which is where uh, Kali Andreas, AKA my bodyguard, if you know that story, he's from Nuremberg. He doesn't live there anymore, but that's where he grew up. Just a little random tangent fact. And yeah, I'm gonna be my train the first train leaves at 11.30 and then with the transfer, if everything goes well, I won't be back in Hamburg until 7 p.m. tomorrow night. So that is a long day of traveling and this is not like the night train, so it's just sitting. And when I think, that's over eight hours, isn't it? Oh my gosh. If I got in a plane in eight hours, I could be in Miami or Orlando or I can take a train for eight hours and be in Hamburg. I hope you have enjoyed coming along on this journey. Let me know all about it in the comments below. And now, I mean, by the time you've seen this video, I'm pretty sure I will already be on or have been on the Celebrity Apex. So those are going to be the videos that are coming next. Videos about our infinite veranda cabin, about the aqua class, about celebrity all together as a cruise line. I'm totally excited to try this for the first time and I'm looking forward to showing them to you too. So from my last night here on the Ruse Prestige from the company Plan Tours, good night. Mm -hmm.